Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. But not just any ordinary cubic. This cubic equation has imaginary coefficients. So it's kind of like an interesting uh, problem. And I know some of you are guessing the solution at this point and kind of probably writing down like, oh yeah, I already got it. I got it like five seconds, 10 seconds racing. Okay, to get the answer first. But anyways, I'm going to be uh, talking about two methods here. And I guess the third method, or I should say probably the second method, kind of involves some guess and check. I know some, some guys don't uh, like guess and check or they don't think it's a problem solving method, but it is. And obviously it doesn't always solve the problem because what if you had x cubed plus 3x equals, you know, square root of 5i five or something like that. Guess and check wouldn't be that easy. But it gives us an idea about the solution, sometimes about the range, about the boundaries, so on and so forth. But it's a good uh, strategy to use. Anyways, so let me go ahead and introduce my first method. And my first method it relies on the mantra, no pain, no gain. So it's painful. Okay, great. We talked about Cardano's method before, remember? So we're going to use that one more time because it's fun. So to use Cardano's method, here's what we're going to do first. Let me remind you what that looks like. We're going to cube A plus B. And that's going to give us a cubed plus 3a squared b, you know, so on and so forth. But I want to write it in a more compact form. And you should be familiar if you've seen the previous videos on cubics. You can write this as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. So like a more compact form. And it's kind of nice because I can go ahead and take this term here, right? And then move it to the left. I can subtract it and leave the a cubed plus b cubed alone. You don't have to do it, but I'm just going to do it. So a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b is equal to a cubed plus b cubed. The motivation behind leaving the a cubed plus b cubed on the right hand side is because if you look at my original equation and compare it to this equation, you'll notice that I have something on the right hand side and that could be set equal to this. So the idea basically depends on uh, slick uh, substitution here. So suppose, and you know, that's like a really big word. Suppose this happens. Okay, suppose a plus b is equal to x and then all the magic will happen. Okay, great. Or should I say math of magic? All right, great. So if you do that, you're going to get x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. Now, if you compare this to our equation, x cubed plus 3x equals 2i, you'll see a lot of similarities, right? So, for example, x cubed, they both have x cubed, they both have x, the coefficients of x are different, and they both have something constant on the right-hand side because we're treating x as a variable and everything else is a constant, including i. i is a constant, by the way. Even though it's a letter, it is a constant, the imaginary unit, whatever. Uh, a number whose square equals negative one, something that doesn't exist in the real world, but it has so many uses in electronics, in physics, in mathematics, differential equations, so on and so forth, you name it. Anyways, I talk too much again, let's get back to work. So here, by comparing these two equations, you should notice that we could uh, set negative 3ab equal to 3 and a cubed plus b cubed equal to 2i. And this gives us the following, ab equals 1, I mean negative 1, that's what I meant, right? You know, mathematicians write A, but what they mean is B, actually. But they were trying to say C. There's a joke about that. But anyways, I can remember the exact same thing. But anyways, AB equals equal to negative 1. So let's go ahead and cube both sides here. A cubed, B cubed equals negative 1. A cubed plus B cubed is equal to 2i. Let's solve this as a system. Remember, this is a quadratic in A cubed. So we can kind of uh, isolate, for example b cubed from here, 2i minus a cubed, and then substitute in the other equation right here. So that's going to give us a cubed times 2i minus a cubed equals negative 1. And then if you distribute and let's set a cubed equal to y, and don't ask why, you get 2iy minus y squared equals negative i. Let's put everything on the positive side of y squared y squared minus 2iy minus i is equal to 0. Now, at this point, you could definitely use the quadratic formula, but I want to use something 
smarter or nicer, whatever you want to call that. Uh, I want to use something uh, cool. And that is writing I as an artistic, probably, I should say. I as, um, wait a minute, that's not supposed to be I. That's supposed to be negative one. What am I talking about? Okay, I'm out of myself. Uh, so let's see. That's supposed to be negative one. Okay, that's a negative one. That's a negative one. And that should be a negative one. Okay, great. It's not supposed to be, I'm like, oops, I wrote it again. All right, negative one. Here we go. So I'm going to replace negative one, all the artistic and all the beauty is gone now. I just spoiled it. Anyways, so I'm going to replace negative one with I squared. Yay. And now this becomes a complete square. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Anyways, so we can write it as y minus i squared equals zero. And from here, yay, y equals i. Nice. But we're not looking for y. We're looking for x and y. So here, a cubed is y. So let's go ahead and set a cubed equal to y, which is i. So a cubed equals i basically means that uh, I'm supposed to find the cube roots of i, but there's three of them. Let me find the first one because I'm, I only need one root. And let me go ahead and find it. And once I find it, I'll proceed with the rest, but that I'm going to do it in the second method because you don't need to repeat that, right? That's going to be too long. Anyways, uh, so we have the cube root i, and let's look at the, the, the smallest um, angle that satisfies it. And since i can be written as cosine pi over 2, plus i sine pi over two. and notice that its modulus is one in this case so don't get uh, you know don't get mad at me because i didn't talk about the modulus but modulus is already one for i because it's here right it, oops not there it's right here right the angle is pi over 2 and its modulus is one so it's on the unit circle sort of anyway so this is a cubed and you know with uh, in this form it's very easy to find the cube roots all you have to do is divide by 2 divide the angle by 2 that's going to be cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. Again, I'm not looking for y, I'm not looking for a, I'm looking for x. But what is x? x is a plus b. But what is b? Well, a and b are related by that formula. a, b is equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and find b from here. So b is going to be, to keep a long story short again, I don't want to get into the details. I could if you wanted, like maybe we can write in the comment section. But if you find the negative reciprocal of this complex number, you're going to get the following. Cosine 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. It's just going to be that angle subtracted from pi. Make sense? So um, it's it's going, going to invert and then uh, reciprocate, whatever, something like that. Okay, it's going to work. Now, x is going to be a plus b. If you add these values, you're going to get the following. This is going to be like square root of 3 over 2 uh, minus the square root of 3 over 2. And now you're going to add these two values. That's like one half of i, and this is also going to be one half of i. Remember, sine is ne uh, positive in first and second quadrants, but cosine is negative in the second quadrant. So they cancel out, and we end up with x equals i. Yay! Well, obviously, uh, the cube, one of the cube roots of uh, i, well, not it's not i, but anyway, x is equal to i. Okay. So x is equal to i, and we're going to find the other solutions from here. But let me go ahead and proceed with the second method because I'm going to show you the rest in there. So second method, the second method, relies on guess and check. Okay, how does it work? Here's how it works. So I'm going to guess, like, since the right-hand side is so simple and I have powers of x on the left-hand side, I'm just thinking, can x be a power of i, like maybe x is equal to i to the power something? Uh, it's probably either i or i cubed. Well, let's test i. If x is equal to i, then i cubed plus 3i becomes, because i cubed is negative i plus 3i, and that's equal to 2i. Awesome, so x equals i works. How about x equals negative i? If you cube negative i, you're going to get negative i cubed and minus 3i, and that's just going to be i minus 3i, but that's just going to be negative 2i. So x equals negative i is not going to work, but x equals i is going to work, so that's one of the solutions. Just like we found in the first solution, but how do you find the other solutions? So this part is also kind of cool, because I'm going to show you without long division. Obviously, you can do long division, you can do all sorts of things, but since I know one of the solutions, I can do the following. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and uh, break down 3x into x plus 2x. This is cool in many ways. Take out x 
and take out 2. Now, who said that sum of two squares cannot be factored? Well, not in the real world, but in the complex world, everything is possible. And I can write this as x plus i times x minus i, because x squared minus i squared is x squared plus 1. Same thing. So here we get a common factor, which is really nice. And we can take out x minus i. And from there we get x squared plus ix plus 2 is equal to 0. So the rest is basically solving this uh, quadratic equation that you know results from um, you know the distributive property or whatever. But we know that x equals i is one of the solutions. Let's go ahead and find the other ones. How do you find the other ones? Using the quadratic formula. Okay, so x equals negative b plus minus the square root of uh, b squared, which is i squared in this case, minus 4ac, that would be 8. Let me write did that, write it down this way, show my work. i squared is negative 1, negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9, and the square root of negative 9 is just 3i. Let me write it that way. Now from here we get the following. Either negative i plus 3i over 2, or negative i minus 3i over 2. And this one gives us i, and this one gives us negative 2i. So we already know that this is a solution, but x equals i just repeats. So the roots are i, i, and negative 2i. Obviously, we are expecting three solutions, even though they might be repeating, uh, because it's a cubic equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.